Welcome back to the exchange. Stocks have held up remarkably well this year as we've dodged one speculative sell off after another from Bitcoin to SPACs to meme stocks and even Tesla. Is this a sign of resilience or is liquidity about to dry up? Joining me now are Katerina Simonetti, Senior Vice President at Morgan Stanley Private Wealth Management and Bryce Doty, Senior Portfolio Manager at SIT Investment Associates. Welcome to both of you. So Katerina, how are you positioning for what you think is going to be a choppy year? Well, Kelly, thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely choppy year to say the least. Uh, we see the COVID recovery and the uptick in this market happening, you know, a little too fast. As a matter of fact, twice as fast as would be normally expected uh, from the, the economic cycle. We see us transitioning into the mid-cycle at the moment. And this transition comes with the excess choppiness. So while we we find ourselves in the middle of the bull market, we do expect a, a temporary pullback for sure. So how do you position? We position by rotating into the quality. There were certain themes that we're already seeing do extremely well, the tax, small caps, uh, cyclicals. And at this point, we're looking for a place that is going to be a good place to hide for investors, continue be invested, continue benefit from this bull market by certainly rotating to quality and dividend paying stocks. Okay, and I know your sectors in particular, financials, healthcare materials, industrials. Um, Bryce, same thing, let's talk about quality. I think you are excited by uh, what the Biden administration administration is saying about Alaska cruises this summer uh, as well. Yeah, you know, that's just another instance of how travel and leisure is really going to become come screaming back. I think you're going to see even business travel pile on. So we we like a lot of the uh, the cyclical things as well, but maybe a little more um, <clears throat> more of a rifle approach where you really zero in on uh, leisure and and take advantage of things that are really going to see a pop in prices. So we think shipping has just uh, had had a big increase, but it's just going to get more and more. So we like the uh, the sector ETFs that that take advantage of that, like Away and or B Dry and things like that. Sure. The 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 inflation concerns are what I think is going to create some of the choppiness as well, because it's a double edged sword. It's great that every everything's rebounding, but. If we look at what uh, home prices are going to do tomorrow morning, they're going to be up double digits. Well, if you're spending more on homes, you're spending more money on gas, you can't buy as many things. So, so that's where sometimes you'll see a pullback in the markets as well. What I like about today is with the stocks being led by tech, you know, that used to be mean that, oh, that's a, that's a stay-at-home trade, but that, right. that's long gone, right? So now it, what it represents to me, since tech is such a big portion of the indexes, indices, especially like the S&P 500, that's a sign cash is just coming into the market. And there's, and there's, as you mentioned, there's a ton of liquidity out there and the cash is trying to find a place to go. So that's where some days, you know, you look like a genius you know, when the market's going up, and the next day you look like a dunce uh, uh, because all of a sudden there's inflation scares and sure. tax increase scares. So that's why it's going to be kind of choppy. Well, but I think you're bringing this back to the liquidity question. And from both of you, what I'm hearing is not a concern that there's going to be a lack thereof. You know, we're watching the M2 stats. A lot of people are trying to figure out, okay, maybe it peaked in February. Maybe that's when the SPACs peaked. Maybe that's, you know, why crypto has been struggling lately. But it doesn't have to mean that stocks do poorly. Bryce, where do you think the liquidity that you mentioned, you think there's kind of new money coming into the market. Do you expect that to continue? I mean, where do you expect that to come from? Right. You know, it's you're seeing the reverse repo facility that the Fed uh, put in place spike in the last week. And that was previously due to fear. Now, now it's just cash looking for a place to go. And the, and the Fed continues to, to you know, print $120 billion a month. And so there's, there's cash everywhere. And it's searching for a place to go because the yields are so low. And that's why I think you will have some of these nice pops in the equity market and things like that where cash is like, well, we, we got to make money somewhere and that's where we're going to go. I think tips... Uh, and inflation protection areas is where you'll see a lot of money go for bonds. You're, mm -hmm. you're seeing the inflation expectation on a 10-year tip up to 2.5%. Right. I mean, that's a that's a long-term trend. I know the Fed says everything's transitory, but this is a 10-year average expectation of 2.5%. So that's, that's where I think uh, some of the money's going. Fair enough, and I'm glad you mentioned the reverse repo point because I had seen that spike, wasn't sure what the explanation was, but that would be a, an intriguing one. And I want to talk to you about silver, but we'll have to save that for another time, Katerina. I just want to get one more to you on this question about inflation. 
you know, are you guys positioned for it? Are you ignoring it? Do you think the Fed's going to kind of pull off the exit here? What, what, if you can kind of boil it down quickly to concern or not one? Well, I'm with Biden on this one. You know, I think inflation is, you know, clearly a concern, but we've heard over and over the narrative from the Fed that they're not going to act on it too quickly, that they are going to wait and see, and perhaps it's transitory in nature, but eventually they will have to act, and eventually it's going to lead with higher rates. So the sectors that we're looking at would be the ones that are positively correlated with higher inflation and higher rates, yes. like financial example, um, you know, would be a great place to be considering the inflation rate. Yep, we and we've already seen them uh, doing quite well this year uh, in, in an anticipation of that. Thanks, guys. Katerina Simonetti and Bryce Doty joining me to talk through these markets today. Really appreciate it. Coming up, Dollar General.